holy hoes. No, not holy hoes. Hoes with holes. <laughs> Sometimes I really want to break up with you as my friend. Motivation and ambition is what got me far in life. There's only two ways out the struggle. Either you crawl or you fly. I'm talking titles, deeds, ownership. I'm not impressing, I'm investing now. That's ownership. Shout out to Nipsey's Hustle. Now we can all have ownership. Now that's ownership. I think I've only seen your room like maybe twice from the doorway. <laughs> but you've used my bathroom. You haven't like looked in my room when you go to the- I mean, no, not really. I don't be trying to be all nosy. Oh my God, shut up. I just walk in the bathroom and go to- I don't want to be nosy. The door is open. What a I man, the most I might I'll have- I'll be having some, a pee bath, I mean, so I okay. go, go and pee. I don't say, the, mo the most I have is some underwear on my floor because I, I love to take my underwear off and then step out of them and then go put my <laughs> other clothes on and then leave. <laughs> That's what I like to do. Okay. So that I don't end up picking them up out the floor. <laughs> that's the most you go see. Okay. <laughs> Is that it? Like if you're being nosy, like, okay, she got, oh, she got some panties on the floor. Okay, cool. Fenty panties. No. No. What's your choice? Panty choice. Victoria's Secret. Vicky. Even though they're overpriced, but. Why do you think they're overpriced? Because they are. I never bought any. So they used know. to be, the panties used to be like five for 25 and now they're like five for 30 or five for 35. I was like, y'all just going to add, y'all just going to raise the price for less quality. Because honestly, the panties don't even last as long as they used to last. How long do panties last? Come on, drawers be last a while. And then even after they get the holes in them, that's when you I start still... a timer. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. After they get, after I see the first two holes, then I start. Then a timer. you start your timer on uh, I got when you're going to throw them away. At least four more months before the hole gets bigger, or before you get more hole. Like what are we before doing? Before I get more holes, because once I get the holes under my nutsack, then it's time for them to go. But if they don't start there, if they start somewhere else, then it's just kind of like we're good. <laughs> I'm so disappointed. But I threw some holy draws away. Just buy some new draws. I don't like buying stuff. You know they said that you're not supposed to keep underwear for more than like... Six months, right? I don't even know if it's six. I don't even know if it's six months. It probably isn't, to be honest with you. I feel like it might be like four or something like that. But see, that. I'm wondering, like, why did they say that? I don't know. Yeah, because it doesn't really make sense. Because if you shouldn't keep draws for that long, and I get draws are different, but what about wife beaters? Yeah. What about pants? What about bras? What about, right. And I used to know some women who only had like two bras anyway. Mm -hmm. And so does that bring it down from like six months to like three months? Yeah, probably. It probably is three months. But who the fuck is what buying? What if you them, though? Well, who, th well, that's how I feel. But who's, right. like, really buying, you know, for me, going to Victoria's Secret, buying five panties for $35? I mean, and have to restock my whole panty drawer every four months. No, it's not happening. Yeah. That's not happening. I'm not with it either. That's not happening. They can kiss my ass. <laughs> All of it. No, they really can kiss my ass because... <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that. Are my panties clean? Did I put them in the washer? Absolutely. We're good. Right. We're fine. Are there stains? No. We're cool. Like. I guess we should have a podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> look, 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 people are not going to want to sit, sit here and listen to us talk about panties and holy panties and holes and panties and holes and hoes. Holy hoes. No, not holy hoes. Hoes. With holes. <laughs> Sometimes I really want to break up with you as my friend. And Listen, you won't be the first. Because you probably <laughs> won't be the last. <laughs> because I don't know what you'd be talking about. I don't be talking about anything. Okay, that's fine. Nothing at all. That's fine too. 
What do I want to know about Miss Debrita? What do you want to know about me? I want to know who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> who does Miss Debrita Calhoun, right? Did I say your last name correctly? Absolutely not. I've never said your last name. I just remember. <laughs> I have an aunt named Edna Calhoun, and I know it starts with a C. I cannot believe so I was you like, purposely Calhoun. Like Callaway. You said that Callaway. with such conviction. <laughs> it's you Callaway. was like Debrita Calhoun. Calhoun, listen. If Do you... I look like a Calhoun? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I always tell people they'd be like, "Yo, I can't go in." So I used to go in. Um, <laughs> When I was broke, broke, and I go do studies, right? And I'd be out in Texas or somewhere, and I didn't uh -huh. have money to get in a hotel room. Uh -huh. I would sleep in my car, and so then in the morning, I would get up and I would go in the hotel room to get food. People were like, "Well, how are you doing that?" I'm like, "Yo, if you just act like you know where you at, just say good morning to them. You got your little your little slides on, wife beater, like you just got out of bed." They don't know who's in the rooms and who's not. It's they a whole really other don't. Show. I mean, they really don't. I'll be like, "Good morning. How you? Yeah, I'm just gonna get me some breakfast. Go right over there. I eat at three hotels. It's three hotels, like right. I eat at all three of them. Be full, full. So I said that because I just, you know, Calhoun. I just had to. I had to go with it. And and if I was right, then y'all, I'm, I'm on point. He was like, "Yeah, that's it." And you know, the fact that I'm wrong, he'd be like, "Can I see your your room key, yeah. please?" <laughs> But it's Callaway. It's Callaway. Yes. Who is the With breeder? three A's. Hold on, what? Because people spell it with an A and an O and an A. They spell it Callaway. Calla. And it's Callaway. Calla. Literally, a callaway. Mmm. Call Are you a callaway? Sometimes. Depends on who's calling. <laughs> I'm not a callaway for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> For you, I have a callaway. Yes, because I be needing my ginger tea. You, you be needing your ginger tea yes. and to talk about some bullshit. But, um, Pretty much. But yeah, who do I think that I am? I don't know. I'm, you know, I'm a lover. A lover, not a fighter. Not a fighter. I will fight, though, and I'm not afraid to fight, but I really prefer love. Can I'm you a lover. And you know what? I actually... Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say yes, but I've never actually had to fight before. You've never had to fight. Mm -mm. That's scary. I've never had to fight, so I feel like. But what'll happen is like the like growing up and stuff. The girls would talk junk to me, and I'm not a talker. I don't like to go back and forth. I'm just kind right. of like, are we gonna fight or are we not gonna fight? Because I have stuff to do. <laughs> so like, I'm ready to get down to it. And if we're not gonna get down to it and you're just gonna keep yapping, then I'm gonna walk away. Because there, well, there's no point in none of this. Right. So um, so the girls would, you know, you blah, 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 you bitch, and da, 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 and you know, you, you, you know, whatever, yapping or whatever. And I just be like, so are we gonna fight or what? <laughs> And they just still yapping. Yeah, you better be glad that we at school because I'm not even trying to get suspended right now. Uh, <laughs> okay, then what are we doing? What, are, what is this for? Like, so you never encountered a real time. one then? No. Girls are scary. They're really scary for real. See, a lot of girls I grew up with, they was they would fight, they fought dudes. I'm talking about like little girls. Like Of course, I, I believe it. Pashana? Pashana got some of the nicest hands I've ever seen. <laughs> Wait, who is Pashana? This girl I went to high school with. <laughs> you said it like I know her. <laughs> you ought to know her. <laughs> if you had came across Pashana, y'all was going to fight. It was like a Sharkeisha? Like, is that what? I guess. You, know, she... you know who that is? No, I don't. <laughs> who is Sharkeisha? When we're done, I got to show you Sharkeisha. Okay. On, on, the, on the tube. On the webs. Um, on the webs. But yeah, Sharky, I mean, you know, yeah, I, I just, I don't, yeah, I, I've never had to encounter those types of girls. And I feel like maybe the fighters are like the hood chicks, but I've never really had to be super close to the type of woman, I guess, that would be fighting like that, right. you know. So you're a lover. Why are you a lover? Because because I really want people to be happy. I want people to connect. I want people to be peaceful. I want people to be okay, honestly. Yeah. 
All the time. Does that come from, because I know you're like close with family. Mm -hmm. Does that come from like having a loving family growing up? Yeah, 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 and we don't, because we don't really argue. Like, I don't, I, I honestly can't think of a time where there's ever been, like, a big argument in my family or an argument that, like, lasted or right. was just that bad. Hmm. Like, we're a jokey family. We're the family that would go to go to Corral or Ryan's and we'd be loud and right. laughing and loud <laughs> and everybody, you know, would be like, Right. Looking at us or walking past us like, you guys are having a really good time. Like, like yeah, yeah we, we really are. Like, that's really how we are all the time. So, but yeah, my family is just not, we don't, we don't, we don't have, we don't have those kind of issues, you know? So then, you know, when I look at other people, I'm just like, you don't have to have those kind, kind of issues either. Right. I mean, if you choose not to, I mean, you can, you can be serious about stuff. You can be light on your feet about stuff or let stuff roll off, however you want to do. But, you know, it's, don't take life so seriously all the time. Right. You know? How do you deal with confrontation, being a lover? Um, confrontation gives me a lot of anxiety mm. um, because I'm just like, I'm an overthinker. So it's like knowing that I got to talk about this issue or have this argument, like knowing right. it's about to be a problem, right. you know, and being like, okay, like, how do I want this to go? Like, I'll rehearse this. I will rehearse a confrontation. I'll rehearse a confrontation. Mm. I really will. <laughs> so, so would like, you rather, if it's somebody you're close to, would you rather them bring whatever the conversation is to you? Or would you rather rehearse it a million times and then bring the conversation to them? It don't matter, but what's probably going to happen is I'm probably going to re re rehearse it a hundred times, yeah. and then and then bring it up because I mean when it com like when it comes down to it, I mean if whatever I got to talk about, we just got to talk about it. But I'm going to probably have to poop beforehand because my <laughs> nerves like I'm just like right. oh my gosh we gotta have this conversation I don't want to have this conversation my nerves are bad right. my stomach hurts like I don't like it but like we got to so I know how to you know confront somebody I know how to bring issues up yeah if I have to but I mean you'd rather not I mean I'd rather not I'm not gonna front got you I'd rather not so lately, I've been seeing these uh, videos of you from when you were like little Debrita acting. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, look at little Debrita. Oh my God. And I don't think I realized until, and maybe you told me, I'll be forgetting stuff sometimes. It's now. fine. But. I didn't realize that you were acting like that young. Mm -hmm. So how how old were you when when you like first kind of jumped into acting for real? Um, so I was in acting classes all throughout like elementary and stuff, and even my mom. Uh -huh. I remember my mom um, sending me to an acting class like after school even. Uh -huh. So she had me doing that stuff pretty early, and then. Um, but the Central Express was the name of the TV show. Okay. And that was for WRAL. Um, and um, that was... <laughs> they be trying to shop. I know. I, I know. I know it. Um, but so WRAL um, had the Central Express show. And I was 14. Okay. Hold on wait a second. She's like, ish. Because I was probably 13. Okay. 13 and 14. Early teen. Yeah. Wow. When, when I auditioned for them. And that was the first time that I got paid to do any work. Mm. And um, it was, I mean, that How was. How did you make? I don't even. I pro <laughs> it was probably like. Gosh, it was probably something really small, like two hundred dollars. Right. But for a thirteen-year-old, right. you know, you're like, this is, you know, is because up. you know, I don't play. I played a. 
I guess a supporting role because I was in several episodes and okay. you know, um, but I wasn't. I think I was only the main character, kind of sort of, in maybe one or two episodes. Right. Um, so then that, of course, makes your pay go up or down depending right. on how much you're in the episode and stuff like that. So um, you know, so for me that was that was good stuff. Like I really enjoyed it. Um, that was my introduction into like television and film. Mm. And even though it was hard work, it was a lot of fun. I was about to ask, was it hard work then too? Yeah. It's it's the same, like being on on sets, whether it's for a television show, movie, whatever. Them days are long. Mm -hmm. We would be there for, like my mother would drop me off, like, because if we were filming at somebody's house or the school that we usually filmed at or whatever in Durham, I don't even remember what school it was, but um, drop us off, well, drop me off at like, six o'clock in the morning and went and picked me up again until like nine, 10. So, so it's funny because I've never, I've been on the set of a video shoot before mm-hmm. that was maybe two hours long. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I've never been on set for a, like a commercial or a TV show or a movie. Why are the days that long? Um, so it's a great question. So you get to, so first of all, everybody got to be on set. So everybody who's involved in the production got to be there. Everybody got to be on set. Um, there's you got your main, you got you know you got your principal characters, and then you got your extras. Right. Um, everybody got to be where they're supposed to be. You got to um, get your space together. So, um, you know you got to get all the cameras, the lighting, the sound. Um, all that equipment in, all the people who run that equipment in, um, set everything up. And so all the actors have to be there for all of that going on? That's crazy, because I know when when I was on set for the video shoot, when when we came in, they already had the lights, mm-hmm. the cameras, everything was, they had did all their testing and everything, mm-hmm. and it was just like, all right, let's start shooting. Yeah. No. And sometimes it's, I mean, sometimes it is like that. Right. But sometimes it's like, okay, the school opens at, like, we're opening the school for you guys to film at six. And they're like, okay, well, everybody need to be there then mm-hmm. at six, as opposed to them trying to come in at 5.30 or 5 gotcha. to set up, to do this and do that, you know, whatever. Um, and they just want everybody to be there and to be in place. And then sometimes you need your actors to set up. So me, I'm dark skinned. Right. So they they need to white balance the camera. They need to, you know, figure out, you know, what angles they need to make sure I'm not washed out or too dark yeah. on camera. So they're adjusting the lighting. They're adjusting the sound. Like, so, so, you know, all that type of stuff before we even film. And then, and then they're walking us through the blocking. Yeah. So then they're walking us through, okay, so, you know, you're gonna come in through this classroom and then you're gonna walk down the hall, you're gonna look around and do this, you're gonna make this left right here, you know. And we're rehearsing everything, you know, over and over. And sometimes, you know, you get the giggles on set, that's the whole <laughs> thing. And you just can't get it right because you're trying to stay in line and you keep laughing, it's stupid. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know why that's a thing, but it really is like, it, or sometimes you, you're you trying to do the line and you just can't get it right. Right. Like, so you they're know. just doing all those takes. Yeah, all the takes. And, you know, and, you know, sometimes other stuff like, you know, like this noise right here, like that noise on set. Yeah, on set is it? Yeah, it's a wrap. You know, so they're like, you know, we could be filming and the ambulance go by. Yep. Or the air conditioner comes on. Or people are talking, you know, outside, especially when you got a bunch of kids. Yeah. And you got to be like, quiet on the set guys we're about to start filming like shut up we can hear y'all right. <laughs> you know type of thing and then of course you're filming all day from six o'clock in the morning until you know the evening time they feed us so then they got to make time to feed us so then you know they're ordering pizza or they're ordering whatever I was you know about to ask, for, what y'all eating? yeah we had good, pizza yeah. the food was good i'm not even gonna lie to you okay um and you know so they will order that stuff you gotta wait for everybody to eat you know, so it's just, it just be, that's why all, it's always like long right. for just stuff like that. If you got to change your wardrobe, because, you know, of course, if we're going to be at the school and we have several scenes on different days, they're like, we got to get all those in. Right. So now we got to break. We got to do costume changes and stuff like that. And, you know, be at a different part of the school. Or if you're shooting outside, 
Oh, yeah, you so got to do, beast. yeah, the sun, you <laughs> right. know what I mean? And you it's gotta, steadily moving. And it's moving, and right. you will you will miss a shot if you don't, if you're not out there at the right time, or if it's cloudy, or if it starts raining, or, yeah. you know, whatever. So, them days just be long, like, you know, so, but, and it's, and it's hard, but it's, it's fun. Right. It was fun. What's, what's more rewarding for you, or which do you prefer, if, if either? being on set with other people and doing a TV show or a movie or being on stage by yourself and performing poetry? I don't know. <laughs> That's, I, don't, I don't ever like that question because I don't like to choose because right. they, all, they both have their different like rewards and benefits and you know, um, pros and cons. Like, you know, of course, when you're on stage, you get the instant gratification. Yeah. It's you know you know when a, if a, if you know you're performing a, a play and you make a joke and everybody laughs at that time you know it hit you know right. it you know everybody's watching it, everybody's into it. If you do a poem and it's a it's a good line and everybody's saying whatever they're saying you know um, so it's kind of like this instant gratification thing and listening to the audience's responses and you know. It's kind of fun being on stage and letting things happen because it's it's organic and magic can happen in the moment right. on stage. Um, and but then in film, it's like you have the opportunity to perfect. Yeah. You know, I, I, we can do this ten different times to get it exactly how we want it, right. so that the finished product can be on point. Right. You know, whatever. So it's it's that thing you can, you know. Um, play with all the different angles and, um, you know, do it, basically do it, do it for a shoot film for a day and be done. Right. But if I'm doing a play, I got to be yep. here tonight. I got to be here tomorrow night. Right. I got to be here Saturday <laughs> night, you know, and it's like, it's a continuous thing as opposed to doing one project, one thing, and then putting it out for a million people to see. Yeah. It's like, we got to do this show. 20 different times, right. you know, for all these people to see this. Does that get super redundant or, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I know I was listening to Denzel and he was talking about when they did uh, Fences on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And he said they did a hundred and I think like eight, eight times. I can't imagine. I can't imagine. I always said I wanted to do Broadway, but I'm done. That, that commitment level is real high. <laughs> <laughs> it's really high, but like a hundred and of the same, the same production, right. and then you gotta make it feel new every time. Right. Do you, if if you were on Broadway, what type of production would it be? What role would you have or want? I don't even know. I don't. Um, I don't know. What role have you not done in any I have, facet I have that you have not been do? an evil person. Evil. I want to be a trifling, evil ass mm. person. I really would like that. And I could see it because <laughs> the way you cut your eyes at people sometimes, you, look, you, you ain't better all the talking, but you'll be like. <laughs> the fact that you be seeing me. Uh, oh, I, you know, I got these eyeballs. I see everything. Because I be, I will, but I, I don't, you know, I, I will cut my eyes in a heartbeat. But, I'm, you know, typically when I'm doing movies and stuff, um, I have, I'm the character with sense. I'm the reasonable character. Right. I'm the, you know, mature character. I'm the good friend, you know. And I'm just like, I want, can I be, be bad? Evil, be bad? Like, yeah. Okay. Can, you know, like, I, I would like to be the character that people don't like. Like, hmm. I could see you. It would be fun to see you in a role where you're like the stalker, the ex. I would like stalker. to do that. Kind of how um, Sanaa Lathan and Michael Ely did mm -hmm. it. With, was it the perfect boyfriend mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, mm -hmm. that ain't crazy like stupid crazy so when I did um, so the poem um, Thor's hammer or okay. whatever um, I actually recorded with the with this artist named Quint Rashad um, we did um, he like put music behind it okay. and so we have like a recording of it and one of the ideas for it was that mm. to, for the video okay but it was like, 
I'm crazy stalker. Like right. you got me crazy. Like now, like I'm <laughs> outside of your door. So when you gonna do it? <clears throat> I don't know. What you waiting on? I don't know. We want to see more of everything that's inside of that brain. I know, but it all costs money. <sighs> <laughs> don't it though? Woo! Why can't I shit be just, free? But I don't know. I don't know. Why can't I like, like hook up with like a college like class where they gotta, you know, do projects for a grade. Right. And be like, y'all wanna do this with me? Right. Like, and then they be like, yeah. Yeah. And then just do the whole thing and it be done. I'm sure that there has to be a way to tap into that. Yeah. With colleges and universities and even possibly high schools mm -hmm. as well. Um, we just need to make some phone calls. Yeah, because I'm just like, I'm just, I know, I know that they, I mean, I know they got to, they have to, you know, anybody doing film, television, anything in college, they got to have projects and things that they get graded on. Right. And so I, I'm just like, that would be really good, like, for people who don't have money like me. That like would that. be dope, too, because um, then you could have all the different people that do the different things that yeah, you need to get yeah. it done even better yeah. versus having maybe one person yeah. that's there. Yeah, but my ideas cost money, I've learned. And, um, yeah. you know, even my one woman in production, I, every time I think about it, I'm just like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> paying for a venue, paying for set stuff, because yeah. I'm like, I want couches, I want tables, I want like a projector. I want, I want a film to be playing during the, the, the production. Right. So then I got to pay the film the film to put on the projector during the, you know, and so I'm just like, I just be like, oh my gosh, like I, everything. every time I think about it, I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, like, okay, you know, but it costs money. Artists, our, our visions cost a lot of money. Yeah. How do you think people push through, through that, that financial wall? Cause I've been trying to figure it out too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I have no clue. Mm -hmm. If I think if I, I mean, if I, if I knew, then I would, I would have pushed through it yeah. <laughs> by now because I'm just like, I don't know. Like I have a friend who's, um, he, he's like a software engineer and you know, so he's been lucky to be in IT right. and he gets paid, paid pretty well, but he's been, he has been able to finance his artistic stuff yeah. because he has a good job. Right. Um, but everybody's not lucky like that. Yeah. You know, everybody is not making, you know, 80, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollars a year right. to make stuff like that. So it's just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how people, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're working three jobs, like to complete a project <laughs> or something right. like that. I don't know. I don't, that would drive me insane, but. That yeah. would drive me insane. It's, it's a lot. Um, I wish, and I know I was talking with, with somebody before, and they were just talking about how all that, like, really dope people need, artists need our eyeballs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if certain people that already have those eyeballs would then spotlight some of those people who don't, mm -hmm. then it would, like, instantly yeah. change a lot of things. And sometimes, you know, celebrities um or people that have kind of made it if you will do that yeah but not at the clip um that he was talking about yeah he was just like yo like every week all they gotta do is point to somebody yeah and it's it's out of here yeah and i and i even think about like like me if i was rich like if i had millions of dollars Maybe not even millions, you know what I mean? Yeah. But a lot of money. Yeah. Like, I know the people that I would be like, yeah, let's go ahead and do that project. Really? Yes, yeah. Because, like, for me, if if I know you're super dope, which you are, mm -hmm. just from a selfish standpoint of view, I'm like, I want to see the project. <laughs> so, like, I would literally pay for the project just so I can see it. The fact that everybody else gets to see it, and, you know, is, you, you is, get, you get is a side it. thing. Yeah, it's an you extra, know. you know. I'm just, I just want to see it. Yeah. Like if I had the money, I would pay for certain people to do it. Here, do an album. Yeah. I, like for me. Yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> How much you need? <laughs> Seven bands? Okay. Is Ten it, bands. I'm right. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Um, but I don't I don't see people that I know or that we know that are in position to do that. Mm-hmm. Most people most people mm-hmm. aren't aren't doing that. And mm-hmm. I've been trying to figure out why like not. how to yeah. How to make that happen for the how to for people? Yeah, that. But not only just me, because it could be me, and I may pick five or ten people over the next few years, or whatever the case may be. But mm-hmm. if there's a hundred of me's yeah. that are doing that, then how many more people are then spotlighted and have projects that are funded? And then once those people are funded and mm-hmm. they've done projects, and now mm-hmm. they got then they pay, and then the waves just keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So, because I thought about all of that, and again, and, and even outside of you know, doing videos and stuff for my poems, which I will be doing, right. but um, you know, putting on my own events, yeah. like for things that I want to do, and how much all that costs and stuff. Cause, Listen, you already know. I'm I, like, here go my money. If you do, if you got an event, <laughs> my dollars take them. Listen, I've done two so far. I did the 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 video release party or whatever last year and then yep. the lipstick diary reads with Jay Renee and just coming out my pocket with all that stuff just it's not uh yeah it's not fun that's why people, that's why people love sponsors yeah <laughs> so I'm just like yeah I don't uh-uh. shout out to the Black Friday market yes for sponsoring this episode yes Black Friday market <laughs> come right. on somebody because it, it is um it's a burden yeah. for, for artists. And then I often wonder, like, for the stuff that you created that's already been great, like, how much greater mm-hmm. would it be if you had what you needed to just say, okay, yeah, that, that's how I want that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, only, like, I could only imagine. Oh, listen, I already, please. Even when we did Lipstick Diaries and, well, I told you, we had the, we wanted what well, I wanted to have like a um make it a production and have cameras set up where you could you know switch to different cameras during right. the show and all that type of stuff and they were like yeah it'll be like an extra like 500 dollars." i was like excuse me <laughs> <laughs> don't got that we're not even gonna go there right. um but like you know in my mind i could i could i could see yeah. like how much like better that it was gonna be I, a shout out to um manders on sex um, Mander, Mander on sax or Manders on sax because he, I watched a production that he did, mm-hmm. um, where they were doing, um, a Stevie Wonder tribute mm. and they had that production, like that whole, the camera set up and right. we're jumping here and jumping there and that joint was fly. Yeah. It was fly. I bet. Cause then, cause then it's, it's more like real television. Yeah. Yeah. You know the BET Awards or whatever, where they they got all these cameras yeah. that are popping. Now, I've even seen the joint, you know, where the, the cameras is flying in. Yeah, that's crazy. Yo. It's but, just like, but that one camera costs like five hundred thousand uh, dollars. And you know, and honestly, <laughs> it's probably on a drone. You right. know what I mean? And it's just kind of like, but all of that, all of that is is expensive, and it's just like. But, you know, I don't know. Hopefully, like, in my mind, I'm just like, I hope, hopefully I connect with the right people right. that will want to invest in things like that. Um, I think you will. Yeah. Because there, there has to be somebody that you run into that was like I was, like, just like, she's phenomenal. <laughs> But they got like long bread and they just be yeah. like, so uh, you just got to make sure you respond to their DM when they do Shut it. up. <laughs> uh, why are you always bringing up old stuff? But I hadn't brought up the old stuff in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> no better time than to let the people know that you left me on red. I did leave you on red, but you know, it just, it was. I was just like, I don't know who this person is. I don't know what he's talking about. How many guys be in your DMs? That's the question. Cut the camera off. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, they be there. They, they be in the <laughs> they DMs. Be, they They're, be there. They be there. That may be the title of this episode. They be there um, in the DMs. But, you know, it depends also on what I post. 
Mm-hmm. Um, cause sometimes they're, you know, they're, they're pretty chill, you know, and then I'll post, you know, I'm, I'm out and I'm in a dress or, you know, whatever, whatever I'm doing. And they'll just be like, Oh my God. Hi, how are you? Right. You're so pretty. You're so beautiful. I love one guy. Be like, I love you. Oh my! I just be like, you love do me, not huh? know me. Like, come on. He loves uh, humanity. Yeah, shut up. Maybe <laughs> 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 be like, I love you. I'd be like, okay, like, okay, sir. Um, but yeah, like, I, it's it's. You know, I'm not gonna say it's a whole bunch, but. It's enough. Several. Yeah, and a lot of the people are, are pretty consistent. So I'm not going to say that I have, like, new DMs, like, all the time or anything like that. It's kind of like the same 20 people who, like, <laughs> kind of go, 20? you know, like a little in a little <laughs> look, carousel. Look, niggas out there counting their odds. Like, okay, <laughs> one out of 20. <laughs> 19 and 18 probably gonna fall off soon. Just, gotta stay the course. She gonna block. She gonna block 14 and 13 like in a couple weeks. So right. there's gonna be a couple openings what is coming. It, what does it take for for somebody to get your attention? Um, That's a question I don't know. Like who try? Like if they're trying to date? Yeah, me if they're or trying something? to date you. Like what does it take to get Miss Debrita Callaway with three A's? <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it now. <laughs> what does it take to get um, your attention? You know, I, it, it takes... Uh, um, so I like... I prefer men who are articulate, who um, are gentlemen, who are respectful. Um, lots of flattery. Because um, <laughs> I'm just like... Because I feel like when you flatter me, I feel like, you know... You know, especially if you if you're flattering me with like a something you've seen, like a new video you've seen of me or right. a project or that poem that you did on blah blah blah, like was really dope and you're or, you know you're gorgeous. Blah, blah, blah. You know, like I feel like you're actually like listening to what I was doing. Right. Um, you know, um, or anybody who who is in I guess in any kind of way interested or invested in what I'm doing. Like yeah. if I if like like I said if I know that you've gone and you've watched some of my videos or you've come to a show. Yeah. Or you purchased a book, you know, or something like that, and you're getting back to me. Oh, this, you know, I got your book such and such ago, and you know, it's really dope, and you know, or I saw you at City Soul, and I feel like you were really, you know, yeah. like that type of thing. Like I felt like you kind of like have done your a little bit of research on me. Enough, just, you know, just, just enough. The, you know enough to like jump into the DMs and right. stuff like that. So, um. So yeah, like I like I like bold people. I like people who um, are not afraid to say how they feel. Yeah. Um, all that stuff. Like I really enjoy that. Like that type of person. Take notes, niggas. Listen. <laughs> that type of person specifically. Like I I like confident men. I like men who know what they want. I like men who want to see me. Right. Who are like, you know, what's your schedule like this week? I would love to take you to lunch or dinner or, right. you know, um, like men who make stuff happen, you know, when's your next show? I would love to come to your next show, you know. So why, um, so why is it hard for, because I've heard a lot of artists say this, why is it hard for artists to date? To date each other? No, just to date. Period. Oh, I was, I was about to say, that's a whole nother question. Right, yeah, then I said, that's uh, that's <laughs> artists dating artists is, <laughs> yeah, that's a little, um, um, I don't know. I, sometimes I feel like, um, I, I think that artists have to really be understood, like, um, by people that they're dating. Some people don't understand that, like, some people need, artists need their space to be artists, yeah. like, outside of a relationship. And it's just like, I love you, I want to hang out with you, I want to see you, but I need a creative space right. and I need my creative time and that don't include you. And so I need to kind of be away from you or I need to like, you can't be calling me all day, like, you know, yeah. like that type of thing. And, you know, some people don't really understand that or they don't understand your schedule as an artist if you're busy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, um, yeah, like, yeah, some people just don't know how to how to let you be creative and um Yeah, and then artists are, are very sensitive. 
A lot of them are. They're very sensitive people. Um, and, you know, I think that people don't understand that either. Um, I think some people fall in love with, like, the idea of people, oh, you're, you're a dope painter, you're a dope, you know, um, actress, you're a dope poet, you're a dope dancer, or whatever, and don't understand, like, okay, this dope person that you see, I'm not always dope all the time. Right. <laughs> you know, like, sometimes I be crying for no reason. You know, <laughs> sometimes, you know, I wake up and I got slobber on my face Jesus and boogers Jesus. in my nose, and sometimes I pass gas and stuff Yo. like, you know, normal people. <laughs> um, you know, so it's just kind of like you're falling in love with this idea that I'm just going to be, like, really dope and on this pedestal all the, all the time. And so then when the artist falls short, it's just like, how dare you? you know what I mean? How yeah. dare you not be amazing all the time? Like, you know, and it's just like, we're, we're still people. Right. You know, so. So you grew up in Raleigh, right? Mm-hmm. How, how has growing up in Raleigh and being able to see the changes, how has that shaped what you've done and, and want to do? Like, do you feel Raleigh's better off now? than it was when you were 10? Um, well, I, I, get, I get to see it through different lenses. I mean, as like getting older. So it's like when I was 10, I was just focused on school. <laughs> right. And, you know, but now that I'm older and I, you know, have real people responsibilities um, people and I'm able to actually get into like what I love, like on my own, I get to see it differently. Right. Um, and... Um, I think that the Raleigh-Durham area, and I had to put them together because between them both, a lot be happening. Yeah. Um, and it's a hop, skip, and a jump to go from Raleigh to Durham, Durham to Raleigh. Yeah. Most artists do, I guess. Most people do. But, um, but at one point, Durham was kind of it, especially for poetry. Even okay. like City Soul coming, you know, coming to Raleigh, that hasn't always been a thing. That was so, in, that was in Durham. Hmm. Churches open mic was in Durham. Well, that makes sense because he lives in Durham. Yeah. Yeah. But for a while, that was. The, so what shifted it from Durham to Raleigh? I don't. I don't, I don't yeah, even. I, I don't even remember. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, and then, but of course, once he brought it to Raleigh, it just grew big, got bigger, 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 wow. and bigger. You know. So I think Raleigh has the people, but Durham kind of has. I don't know. I feel like Durham's a really good pot for art gotcha. but i feel like if you want to expand it you got to bring it to raleigh you know what i mean like right. it's that that's it, like an interesting and that's crazy thing. because it is so it's yeah literally people think that don't live here think it's the same place yeah it's raleigh durham, durham yeah it's not even just raleigh yeah and durham. yeah it's like nah it's two different counties my right God. and two different literally cities. literally that's that's interesting yeah because you know I've, i haven't been around long enough to know city so outside of or any of the stuff that's going on outside of just kind of the last three years or so mm -hmm. um so to to be in raleigh as long as i have but not be immersed in the events world at all really mm -hmm. um all i know is now yeah you know what I mean? yeah so i'm always wondering like yo how has it like changed over the years and was it better or worse i mean or... there's a lot more stuff happening now mm. than used to than there was before i mean now and now you got a lot of people um who were like you know if we have one open mic in raleigh a lot, some of the people who were coming to that open mic have now branched off and have their own open mic right and their own events you know type of thing so it's you know and maybe it's not in raleigh or durham but it'll be in apex or in wind window yeah. window um you know or whatever so people are really like branching out to like have their own you know events and stuff like that have you know have them however they want to you know do their own yeah. stuff but there's a lot more stuff happening now than back then by far and my mom you know my mom used to be out here i mean the the, the poetry scene i i feel like has always kind of been like it's been here, but I just feel like it's just recently started like popping. Because even when my mother, like when I was in middle school and stuff, she would come, she would go to open mics downtown. She knows Fuse, hmm. like, she, you know, she knows who that is, right. you know, cause she's like, he's been around been since around. I was going yeah. to, you know, open mics and stuff. And she was telling me about the open mics and how they would do it. And they would have like 
you know, vendors out and there would be oils and incense and they would have this big old like mural and people could come and draw on it and wow. like stuff like that. And, hmm. you know, like, you know how that's changed because it's not like that now. Right. <laughs> um, but like, you know, just the vibe of it now. Now it's more entertaining than than anything than uh, right. than like that underground like thing that my mother probably was going to right with, you know um so you know stuff like that like learning how that's changed and stuff like that and um yeah and it's just getting bigger and bigger i mean even with city so i'm surprised at how huge it has yeah. gotten but people are like people need art and people are realizing like they need they need these spaces they need these things to get their mind off of whatever yeah, or yeah. yeah and thankfully they're they're there yeah because if not then only god knows what people would would do because it's gonna come out one way or the other yeah so i'm, I'm glad that it's there mm -hmm. have you ever thought about leaving raleigh moving mm -hmm. to where you don't know I, I haven't, so I haven't really, honestly, haven't traveled enough to to different places to say, I kind of like this area gotcha. or I don't like this area or whatever. So that's been one of my goals to kind of like get out. Um, yeah, like, and people keep trying to put different places in my ear. People are like, uh, my, the director for the movie for two wrongs. Of course they're going to tell you Atlanta. She's like, come to Atlanta, girl. <laughs> Like, you know, and I'm just like, there's a, there's a lot going on in Atlanta, obviously, and yeah. that, especially in, in film and TV, since Tyler has, has got there and has mm -hmm. his studio, there's so much more mm -hmm. that's going on. So that just from that standpoint, yeah. it makes sense for somebody to say Atlanta. Like come to Atlanta, but I feel like it's so saturated. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like everybody there is an entertainer. You know what I mean? Like every yeah. single person. Um, and I'm just like, I, you know, I don't know if I want to live there. I don't know if I like, I like change, but I don't know if I like ginormous cities, mm. you know what I mean? Like that are, you know, going to Atlanta and you're on a, a, a freaking seven lane highway and traffic <laughs> is like traffic is backed up, like, Atlanta. you know, like that type of thing. Like, I'm like, I don't really know if. I really want that, you know, um, right. but I know that if I really wanted to invest myself fully into my and the acting career or whatever, right. that's somewhere I would need to go, yeah. you know, a New York or an Atlanta or, Ooh, you know, whatever. Yeah. That's on a whole another scale right there. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. And I haven't been to New York. I've never been. You've never been to New York? What? I would have definitely told somebody thought, that. Yes, I just told my friend that like last night, and he was like, "Excuse me." I would have definitely <laughs> thought you and Bambi and Toy, y'all would have been hopped up to, to New York by now. I'm pretty sure they've been a million times, you know. And then Bambi's like from York. Brooklyn, but I'm just like, because she's been like, "Come with me one day when I go like home, you can come right. with me and stuff." But I'm just like, I feel like for me, I feel like New York is too much. Like I feel like it's. And my friend, my friend last night described it. He was like, you probably feel like it's too loud. Like yeah, it's too, it too you know loud. what I mean? And I'm just like, yeah. Cause I'm talking I, about nonstop. Yeah. All the time. Like the light be red and they're just sitting there blowing their horn. Yeah. Like, I'm like but nobody legally can move. <laughs> <laughs> Why are y'all blowing, blowing your horn. horn right now? You know, like that type of thing. Or just all the people walking, you know, on the Fast. street. Or, and the rats. Oh my goodness, the rats, not here for that. Um, like, deal. just, you know, the, the build, I feel like the buildings would just be like, oh my God. Like, yeah. and I just get, even like coming downtown Raleigh, I get anxiety. Cause I don't <laughs> like, I don't like too much happening. Like, if time. I'm, especially if I'm driving my car, I can right. hit somebody, whatever. And it's like just too much. It's too much, too much traffic. Like even coming down here to come, you know, to this interview, right. I was like, I have not been downtown during the week 
oh, on a wow. work day in a minute in a long time i was like i forgot there's real traffic downtown <laughs> like because i'd be down here on the weekend and it's just kind of like lackadaisical right. you know but during a week i was just like oh my goodness but you know so i don't you know i don't like i get a lot of anxiety when there's a lot happening right. and i've always felt like new york would be would just be too much you'd have happening. to ha you'd have to not have a car there no, absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. And I would need to be going with somebody else when I go visit because yeah. I'm like, I'm not going by myself. I'm going to get lost. I'm going to be crying. I'm going to be like, oh my gosh, I don't know where I'm at. There's too much happening. Like, somebody come get me like, from where I'm at. Like, I just know it. Being on a subway, like, I'm like, I don't even understand how that works. Like, I, I don't. So do you think you'll ever decide to make the full jump into acting? If I, if I could be given the space to, yeah. Okay. But I've always, like, in my mind, like, I've always had to live a life where I have to work and, you know, um, do acting part-time. Right. So, because I got to pay bills. Okay. And acting is just not lucrative enough to, to pay my bills. I wish that it was. I wanted to. I would love to just be like, yeah, I know for sure I can go out here and make you know, two twenty five hundred dollars a month doing acting right. or whatever. Um, but that's just not the case. It's very hard. So scenario, right? You're working a job, right? Decent, but not anything that you really, really want, mm -hmm. right? Which, which would be every job, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get a phone call that says, hey, we want you to do this particular film, and let's say it's only going to be two months long that you're shooting. Let's say they're paying, I don't know, maybe four grand a month, right? So that's eight thousand dollars. But you would have to quit your job to go do it. Would you take the plunge and go do it? Oh my God, that's so hard. <laughs> because I feel like in my mind, I feel like that's the type of thing that would happen. Mm-hmm more so than anything else. It would be like, hey, we want you for this particular role, you're perfect, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, pay this amount, and it's you know, a decent amount of money, and then you have to make a decision of whether or not you're going to leave whatever job you're at and do this and hope that that parlays into something, something else. Something else, yeah. Or be like, uh, I can't really do that because I, I'm mean, working. It would have to, I, I would probably say yes. I would okay. probably do it, especially if I already don't like what I'm doing now. <laughs> One thing I will I will say that I'm very thankful for is my mom has always said to me, like, if you ever wanted to do that, if you ever wanted to pursue, like, an artistic career full time, and it and, and something doesn't work, just come home. Right. Like she's always said that to me, so I know that I have the freedom of failing. You know, if it doesn't work out, I That's know that up. I can That's come dope, home. That's dope because yeah. a lot of people. Especially a lot of artists don't have that yeah. type of support. Yeah. 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 So I'm thankful that, you know, that I know that I can come home if it doesn't work out. But it's just, it's just doing it. Right. It's just having, again, having the space. Like, I just haven't, I just haven't had the space to be, to pursue it full time and still pay my bills. It's just not. Yeah. Not happening. How is it? <laughs> right how now. is it having your mom as be artistic as well? I never even thought about the fact that like neither one of my parents that I know of anyway yeah. are artists. Yeah. So like you feel like you're doing this like kind of by yourself, you know, well, or I, like. Well, I never it felt out. it because I never thought about it till just now. Oh, okay. And I'm like, yo, but her her mom like understands. Her mom's an artist. Yeah. She makes films. Like, mm -hmm. like how how. Has that ever kind of resonated with you? Um, so my mom has always worked for the, for the state, a okay. state job. She did not start doing film and directing until like 2014. Right. 15. So that's recent that she even got into her, her lane right. of artistic stuff because she's a mom. So she's like, I got to make money. I got to take care of my kids. Right. Like, that's just it. Um, but she's always encouraged me to, you know, do my stuff. So right. she's always been very supportive. Again, 
when Central Express happened, she made sure I was on set. Like, yeah. she made sure I was there. Um, getting me into acting classes and rehearsals for plays in school and telling me to go to, you know, to, to school for theater. I wish you would not have told me that. But <laughs> Why do you say that? <laughs> because of the degree doesn't do nothing for me. Mm. It doesn't, I feel like it would have been like more beneficial, like you don't need a degree to act, right. you know, or to do anything honestly artistic. Um, now, if I wanted to go into like education, you know, teaching acting or something like that, then maybe. Right. But like, I don't. So the degree really is not doing anything for me. And I feel like I would benefit from like, one, if I was going to be an, an, an actor, an artist, to like ma major in business. You know, or something where I could understand. Could, could need to monetize. It. Right. You know, yeah. that would have really helped me. Marketing, like something else. Right. Um, but, you know, she was like, go to school for acting. That's what you love to do. Go to school for it. And that's what I did. And it was fine. Right. But, you know, um, but she's, like I said, she's always been very supportive of anything that, you know, that that I wanted to do. So, um, you know, she, she understands, especially now. Right. Especially now that she's directing and, and all that stuff. And me and her talk about this stuff all the time about getting, you know, our pay, you know, because even with her doing the documentary, she's kind of turned it into a thing where she's opening up discussions for young boys uh -huh. and their parents and having um, forums and um, seminars and stuff like that. And so, you know, she's like, you know, she's like, oh, people need to pay me. You know, you want me to bring this to your state, right. you know? And so, so she understands what I be saying when I'm like, uh, no, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> you want to, you want me to, you know, do this poem in, you know, I don't know, Tennessee, you need to pay me, yeah. you know? So she gets it, you know? So, so we can talk a lot more on tips like that, but like, you know, before she was, she was supportive but she started her dream late because she just now was afforded the opportunity. She just now has a supportive husband right. who's like encouraging her to do things and taking care of the house while she's away doing those things. You know what I mean? So like I said, like, just like I said, like if I'm afforded the space to do it, you know, like more or full time, that would be ideal. I would love to marry a husband who's just like, you don't have to work. Right. You can do your thing, but you don't have. Yeah. So I could be like, oh, my gosh, the world just opened up. <laughs> Let me go to these auditions. Like, you know, like right. that would be like ideal. But it's not that's not, you know, it's not realistic. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, it, yeah, it's realistic. Uh, it know, happens. It does. And I would love for it to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but realistically, it's just kind of like we both got to work, you know. Yeah. We both got to work. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. uh, these things and people need to pay me people need to pay you people need to pay me that's the biggest thing that i that i i think i have quarrels with right now as a spoken word artist um is just getting paid that's the that's the only thing i hate about for poets like yeah. i just don't feel like they get paid as much as a singer or rapper you know to perform yeah. and it's not fair yeah, that's the first thing I ask people when people say, hey, do you know any poets? I got this show. I'm like, is it a paid gig? Mm -hmm. Now, like, that's the first thing I Listen, ask. Listen, when people ask me to do stuff, you know, hey, are you open and available to do such and such? Okay, sh yeah, what's the pay? Right. <laughs> right. Like, and I be, listen, I'm trying know, to find out for y'all before I even before I even send y'all names over. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a proponent of paying people. Mm -hmm. um, Which I appreciate. I mean, it it makes it makes sense because even from a selfish standpoint, mm -hmm. you're in most cases the person is going to perform better if they feel like they're being compensated. Yeah, what they want. Yeah, like they're gonna be like, okay, bet. Like yeah. they give me what I want. Let me get in what they want. Yeah, they they feel valued right. as an artist versus you know it always just being gimme 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 gimme. Give yeah. Me. And you know, there's there's times for that and things of that nature, but I'd be like, yo, like I'd be like, nah, it's not a paid gig. We just trying to. I'm like, yeah. No. Mm -mm. I mean, I got a couple people that told me they'll take, but yeah, the, the, the caliber isn't yeah, the same. Yeah, like you're, just the, so you the, know. the experience, literally. You right. know, you're 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 talking about people 
which for you wasn't a free event or not to really pay much, like you need to be looking at people who are just trying to get, who right. just starting. Right. You don't you don't say, recommend me your favorite poet. Right. And people are recommending you these professional poets, <laughs> and you say, let me pay you fifty dollars. Uh, no. No. Are you kidding that, me? That's, that's not you know, it's like it. don't ask for the best if you if you can't afford the best. Just right. don't do that. Yeah. You know. Um, I just wish, I wish more people had the mindset to make sure that artists are fully compensated. Mm -hmm. um, because I actually think that would bring the level of artistry up mm -hmm. at a lot of uh, events that happen across the nation. Period. Mm -hmm. Because the better people feel about what they're doing, mm -hmm. the better they're gonna they perform. They're gonna perform. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know how to. Because it's hard to kind of count somebody's pockets and tell them what they need to do or mm -hmm. shit. They may not have it to give anybody. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's kind of hard for me to be like, yo, everybody need to pay. Da, 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 da. But that's how I kind of be. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I don't know where that line is to coax people to actually pay artists. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. I've, I've been trying to. I've been trying to figure it out. To figure out how to get people to really, I mean, I yeah. think the first thing people need to do is just be prepared. Like, if you're gonna do an event and you know you want a good artist, save the money. But see, you know, there's so like, many people that are okay with half-ass shit though. Yeah, yeah. And if you're okay with half-ass shit, then you don't wanna pay somebody mm -hmm. whatever amount of dollars, hundreds of dollars yeah. to, to bring them in. You're yeah. like, oh, I'm, I'm okay with whatever. People yeah. gonna come out. Yeah, all I need to do is pay fifty dollars because I'm gonna keep that extra whatever few hundred in my pocket. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, it's just like if I if I ask you, you know, how much you how much your fee is as a as a performer, even if I can't afford you at that moment, if I really want you, I'm a, I'm going to bring you on to another event or whatever the case yeah. may be. But I'm gonna make sure that I'm allotting for your fee like yeah. i if i want to bring you on i'm going to pay you like even when i did my event last you know last year my video reveal um and i asked uh supreme right i was just like you know how much are you and he told me and i was like can't afford you right now right but like if i can't like if i'm able to come into this money i'm gonna yep. don't worry about it you know type of thing um and i could have gotten Somebody just starting and paid them a hundred, you know, fifty, a hundred, you know, just to come out right. for a couple of hours. But I really wanted Supreme. Yeah. That's my guy. Yeah. You know, so when I when I ran into the money, when somebody donated, I ran into the money. I said, I got you. Here we go. We're just gonna make you right now. Right. <laughs> you know Born what I mean? So yeah, because when you when you value people and what they do, you want to pay them. Yeah. Like you want to have a good event. I want people to come and like who's on stage or, you know, whatever the case, like, I want that to happen. Like, I want that for me. But a lot of people, like you said, are okay with mediocrity. And it's just kind of like, you, and you get what you pay for. You get what you, you have to get what you pay for. <laughs> you get what you pay for, um, you know. And I, and I don't understand people coming to me wanting me to, wanting not to pay me and then there's no benefit, like, right. for, for doing it. Right. Because um, if you're not going to pay me, then I need to be performing next to Denzel. Or yeah, something. that's what I'm saying. Like, or <laughs> I need to be in front of like 500 people. Right. Like, and so. Because then I can make it happen from right, there. From there. Somebody's <laughs> going to see me. They're going to follow me but on if Instagram. There's, only, if there's gonna, only 200 people in the audience. You know, like, I, like, I, I already be doing that. I, that's fine. You know, right. I don't I don't need I don't need that, you know. Pay exposure does not pay bills. It, um, it so it's just kind of like, you know, you have to value. Even when I was just starting, you know, I wasn't really getting paid. I thought I, thought I was getting paid like $50 right. to do stuff. But at least it was $50. At right. least you offered me something, something. like knowing that I'm just starting um, to get on stage. So now having done this for a long time, it's just like. Yeah, the price goes up. The price goes up <laughs> after some time. Like, just be ready. Just be ready to pay people. Like, yeah. just be ready. Don't book me and you know that you can't afford a good artist. Now they know. Listen, they, now you they, know. If they didn't know, now they know. The only people I perform for for free is my friends. 
and I ha- but I have the right to make that decision. Right. These are my people. Right. But like everybody else, no. Yeah. I you know. It. And even my friends be want to pay me still. Right. As they <laughs> so I'm just like, but I have the choice to say nope, it's fine. Like this time, whatever, you know. Yeah. But like anybody else, no, don't be asking me to volunteer. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> From the man <laughs> on the moon. That's under my eye. <laughs> I've been trying to like get it out kind of as it, you were talking. It's in your eye? What I is think it's hair? like a, it might be a hair. And I can like touch my eyeball without doing I was about it. to say, I don't want it to try about it. Yeah, I can I touch it. it. And so if it is, I don't know. Ew. I <laughs> you spend contact on your eyes and stuff like that. I don't have. Con- I don't wear contact. So you can just touch your eye, like. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, <laughs> you're so <laughs> disgusting. That is so gross. <laughs> it's not worse than when we were kids and they used to take their eyelid and, and flip, flip it, it under and it'd be red. That's I couldn't so do gross. that. I did that one time and thought I was on like I almost had a panic attack. That's the only time I'm, my whole life. <laughs> Why are you having a panic attack? It was stuck. Yeah, it was. I was like, and, and you actually down, did you know? it. I tried to do it, but I can't do it. That jump do it on my is crazy. Uh, I'm not even gonna try though, cause no, my eyes I'm, are sensitive. I'm definitely not gonna try. But I yeah, I can touch you my can eyeballs. I can touch your eyeballs. Yeah, huh? You're know. gross. Stop. <laughs> no, uh, you're so gross. <laughs> oh man, my eyeball, my eyeball juice is like powerful. And it does what? I was waiting. I thought it was going to be good. I was like, it does what? <laughs> I was going to say it. <laughs> and then I remember we're actually recording. <laughs> I was going to say something crazy. <sighs> Woo. And just cut it out. Just put a sensor beep on it. Oh, man. <laughs> just to put a little sensor beep. Beep. Oh, man, why in the world did I start doing a podcast? I hate you so much. This is not what I'm supposed to be doing in my life. Yes, it is. Is it? Yes. Because now all these people know exactly who you are. But they don't. Yes, they do. Everybody knows me for different things. That's, it doesn't matter. Some people know me as like, some people don't even know I got a real name. I know. They just know me as SP. I know. Because I've said Curtis and they'd be like, okay. And they'd be like, SP. Oh, okay. Right. You know, like that. Like, you know. I met a lady uh, Saturday. She was like, yeah, um, I met Crystal a couple years ago at this event. I'm like, oh, word. That's what's up. What event was that? She was like, yeah, it was, uh, it was an erotic show. It's called Body of Something. I was like, Body of Work? She was like, yeah. I was like, that's what's up. <laughs> So, so, so you wasn't like that's that was my. I, eventually, I did. Okay. And then she was like, "Oh, that's what's up, dude." Da, da. She was like, "I didn't even know." And so I'm like, "Yeah, like, yeah, I wasn't on stage. I ain't, you know, I ain't do nothing." You for did. Real. You was you was actually I, helping, walking around with your wife beater on. Right, spraying whipped cream on people and shit. Yeah. Um, literally. And so then uh, later, she was asking about me recording because I was recording at this event Saturday, and. I was like, yeah, you know, um, something, something I said. And I'm like, yeah, people know me as SP when I'm recording. She's like, SP the writer? And I was like, yeah. She was like, I've seen your videos everywhere. SP shot it. So there's certain people that only oh know me as the video gosh. guy. There's certain people that only know me as a poet. And now people, are, certain people are only going to know me as, you know, the podcaster. Who do you think you are? And so it's just But funny. that's what you want, though, right? Because you don't really yeah, want don't notoriety. Yeah, I don't. I just want the money. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I just want the money so that I can then give it to other artists. <laughs> so it's so like you we, can do your event. Right, and we can do some dope shit together. Yeah, right. And they can do some dope shit without me. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't really care. And I want to eat good. And that's it, but you don't want to be in the spotlight, like, at all. I really don't. I actually thought about doing this podcast behind the camera and just talk to you from back there what kind of crap i mean i've seen people do it i i I have too there's a whole there's a whole uh series on youtube of this guy who interviews like pimps and 
and prostitutes and stuff. Yeah, and he'd be behind uh, the, camera. the something white under white belly. Belly, yeah, 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 yeah. His stuff be good. It be good, but <laughs> he be just letting other people talk and talk and talk and talk. Like there's not, there's it's not a real conversation. Yeah, it's not a conversation. So it's just kind of like it's not. It's good though. I mean, I like it, but it you know, he gets a lot of views. He does. His stuff be good though. I gotta say, it do. I've I'm watched interviewing weird I've people. I've watched about ten episodes. Yeah, now. I tried to watch the one with the um, incest. I was like, Oh, I haven't the seen that. Is this? I saw the one where the guy got shot in the face, and his face is like really deformed. Um, I saw that one. I saw uh, Magic Don Juan. I haven't seen that. He did that. one with him. Um, I seen a. I seen a few more. I need to go back and. And watch some of those. Yeah, I saw one with the new with the new KKK. The new KKK. Yeah. So they're rebranding. <laughs> they're acting <laughs> like we're not as violent as the KKK used to be, where they were outside of people's houses and they were hanging black people and blah blah blah. We're not that, and we don't hate black people. We just don't want interracial mixing. We just don't believe in mixing. Neither do I. But in that he so that's what he said. He said I've met people who, like he's like I've met black people who also don't believe that we need to be mixing. He was like so. It's the new KKK. The like, new KKK. Yeah. I gotta watch. It. I definitely gotta watch that episode. Yeah. Yeah, because I was just like. You have me very. You have my my interest peaked in. Yeah, because I'm just KKK. like y'all are still racist though. It You're right. I mean. Essentially, you, 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 the only reason you're, my whole thing is the only reason you're not like lynching black people is because your ass will go to prison now. Yeah, now yeah, you'll you, go to prison. Yeah, you can't do it now. So, but if you, if, if it was like it was, you, of course, yes, you would. Let's, let's not, you know. The new KKK. Trying to what act like that? you have a heart now. <laughs> you know, we don't kill black people, but we still gentrify their neighborhoods and. AKA kill. Take money from, you know, their education AKA and kill. put them in jail and right. kill them, put our police officers out. Right. Let them kill them on the street, you know. I but, need, I need a, I gotta have, I want to sit down and have a conversation with a, a black police officer. And, and like ask them like, why? Now I know, cause I know some police officers. Mm-hmm. And I know some who, and I don't know them like intimately like that. I yeah. I know one that intimately. Yeah. Oh, let me, hold on. Oh yeah, you got to, uh. <laughs> My car. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> you got to pay. What I just, time is it right I now? renewed it. Right now it's 241. 241? Mm-hmm. Oh. Damn. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's been that long. It's been that long. Yes. Okay, we got about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you are a mess. But yeah, I want to talk to some police officers that like, this is what they wanted to do. Yeah. And find out like, why? Because they, I mean, they, they, I feel like obviously they thought they wouldn't be making a difference or a and change. And then I want to know or... if they feel like they're making a difference or a change. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna find somebody to talk to that's gonna open like up. Like really, like yes, I don't want no all the little fluff stuff. I want to know. We gonna see. Have you seen the black guy on YouTube who who always agrees with what the police are doing? Mm -mm. There's a black guy on YouTube who like be like, well, he shouldn't have did that. He shouldn't have did that. Yeah, like yeah, probably gets a lot of views. Yes. You won't get any of mine. Well, I just thought it was interesting, the stuff that he was saying, because yeah. I'm just like, yeah. I don't know, I may watch it. Like, some of it I, I got, mm -hmm. and then some of it I was like. Yeah, not so much. Yeah, like, yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and, and like you said, like, you know, trying to find a police officer who, like trying to find out why, like why would you agree with these? Why would you agree with these officers? And like, why don't you see what they were doing as wrong? Right. As a human being. Right. And then as a black man. 
You know what I mean? Like, why, where is the disconnect with you? You know what I mean? Like, in my mind, like, when I listen to him speak, I, and, I, and, I, that, and that's probably why I listen to him. You know, I don't watch him often. I have probably haven't. I probably watched like three videos and that was it. Right. But like when I was listening to him speak, I'm just like, where's the disconnect? Yeah, because it's somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. For you not to understand really with, and agree with what's going on. Right. I don't know. We'll see. I think you should, though. I think you really should do that. I am. And I think, and I know you said you, you might want to start having audiences or, or people or whatever. Yeah. That should be one where you have people in audience. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a couple of uh, audience members over at Good Trip. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't asked them here yet. I don't think they would mind, but. Yeah. I'll ask them soon. Yeah, yeah, but you should have them for sure for him. Yeah. Because they might have questions. This is true. Yeah. That might have to be like a real long episode. <laughs> 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 that might be like a three hour episode. Listen, or not. I mean, depending right. on, you know, how, how he answers the questions and stuff. But I'm, I'm just wondering like, if somebody's ever going to walk off. Be like, you know what? I'm done. From the podcast? Mm -hmm. it's, it's bound to happen at some point. Maybe episode 263, but it's going to happen at some point. Why would they walk off? Well, you, There's going to wind that. up being somebody on that I disagree with or they disagree with me. And y'all going to like go back and forth. It's, it's and then they're going to be like. Bound to happen. I had a friend, he's a white guy I grew up with since kindergarten. And he hit me up uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, hey, man, you know, I think we, we need to see each other, man. I would love to be on your podcast and we sit down and talk. And I'm like, what you want to talk about? He's like, well, you know, I've seen some of the stuff you put on Facebook. And I know we don't always agree on everything, but, you know, we, we grew up kind of like brothers. And we kind of did, mm -hmm. my dude. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, man, you know, I know we're growing now and stuff, but I would just love to sit down and talk with you about our differences and stuff. And he was like, you know, no matter what happens at the end, whether we agree or disagree, we we'll still be good. That, that that might be very interesting. What? Because I don't know. I know some of his views, especially when we're talking about religion. Yeah. Ours don't match. And then I don't know what his views are with per police brutality. I know his grandfather. If I'm not mistaken, when I was when we were like elementary school, mm -hmm. I, I was told that he was was racist. Mm -hmm. Now I know his mom, um, his parents were not. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's gonna be a very interesting conversation. Oh my gosh, that's happen. one where you gotta kind of have the topics, you know, kind of <laughs> set because you gotta come with the research and the facts. Well, you know, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You said actually. actually. Actually, the Department of Justice did an investigation on several police departments, and there was racial bias in every one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That type of stuff. <laughs> Had them joints set up. Oh, that's going to be good. I actually would like to see that one. We'll see. I told him I would let him know when. That has me a little anxious. You got to be ready to argue, though, like, like that day. Like, you got to be like, you got to be like, I'm okay, we ready to go. Because I would be like, you know what, I don't even feel like it right now. Like, <laughs> right. We have to revisit this another time. Right. I like, know I set that podcast up three weeks ago. Oh, today but I today really I'm not it. in the mood to be going back and forth for nobody. I don't want right. to do that. So we're going to wrap up. Okay. And then wrapping up, I asked you in the beginning, who do you think you are? Mm-hmm. And you said a lover. I am. Now I'm going to ask you, who do you think you will be? Um, a leader. Mm. Yeah, I'll be a leader. I feel like I, at this point, um, I, at this point, I know there's a lot of eyes on me. And I know that a lot of people are watching what I do. Um, they're waiting for stuff that I'm doing. They're looking at what I post, what I say, what I think. Mm -hmm. um, they're wanting to share my thoughts with other people. Like, and at this point, I just, I feel like I'm a leader. You know, I don't really, I didn't ask for it. I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to be a role model and I will never act like I am. But I think that um, there's a lot of people who look to me to feel seen. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I do feel like I have a responsibility to kind of like, continue to make them feel like 
seen. Right. And like I get them, I understand you're, you know, you're a human being, you're, you know, and it's okay to be whoever you are. So, is that yeah. pressure heavy? I'm not gonna say that it's heavy. Um, it's a choice, you know, that I make. Like, but I'm not gonna act like I don't see what's happening. I'm not gonna act like people aren't like, you know, when are you gonna make like a book about like just life and relationships and stuff? Because right. I want that. I want that book, you know. Okay. Or, you know, I'll just be on your Facebook just to see what you're going to say. You know, like that type of thing. I'm not going to act like people don't do that. Right. Um, but again, I'm no, I don't want to be a role model, but I, I kind of, I do want to make people, I do not have a problem being the sacrificial lamb in a sense to, for people to, to feel comfortable being who they are. Right. You know, so yeah. We're going to leave it at that then. Okay, then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for joining in. Hit the subscribe button, share, like, comment, and we'll see y'all next episode. Yes. Yeah.